Hello, my name is Charles Warner. I'm the owner of Quinky Young Plants. We're a producer of alpines and herbs for sale to Welsh garden centres. I took over the family allotment when I was 10 years old, but when I left school then I went in to do um, pre-diploma in horticulture, which uh, led me on to uh, working on nursery, and from the nursery they encouraged me to go to Pershaw. I was a very young manager, I was 19 years old when I took over the management of a, of a nursery. A couple of years in Birmingham working for a producer of all, lots of different kinds of plants. And then I moved here in 1989, producing rooted cuttings for the trade for, for large nurseries throughout the UK. More recently, in 2008, I decided to supply the local market and we started to sell to, to retailers throughout Wales. My initial experience in horticulture was with, you know, on a nursery that was about the size of the, my nursery is here now. But the partners that ran it had the aspiration to actually become the largest alpine growers in the UK. And although they never quite achieved that, they did, did produce plants on an industrial scale with many hectares of, of glass houses. And I, I was fortunate enough to be there right at the beginning of that. So I learned an awful lot about how to start off a small nursery and then turn it into an industrial sized nursery. And when I came here, I wanted to take some of the things that I'd learned about producing plants on an industrial scale in terms of how you, you market them, how you present them, uh, and the quality standards that you need to adhere to so that I could take them to larger retailers. But at the same time, I wanted it to be uh, small enough to, for me to stay in control of the whole thing myself. When I decided to supply retailers in Wales, the first thing I did was go and do some market research and to see who they were supplied by. And I felt that there was a gap in the market for a locally produced high quality Alpine that you could sell to, to establish retailers throughout, throughout Wales. We only had a small amount of land, so I chose herbs because they were particularly popular at the time and I had some experience growing them. And they also turn over very quickly so we could use the land as efficiently as we could. So we, we grew herbs and sold them throughout Ceredigion and Carmarthenshire and Pembrokeshire. And uh, then we diversified a little and went, went into alpines, which is really my specialism anyway. So we started producing alpines as well and, and selling them alongside the herbs. We sell to retailers of all sorts and all different sizes right across Wales. We tend not to be into the large chains because they are spread out across England as well and our marketing is focused on the Welshness of the product. Um, so we don't, we don't deal with any chains at the moment. So large independent garden centres are our, our, our main customers. But we also go down to um, small local shops, uh, anybody really that, that we can get to in an economical way. What we'd like to be recognised as the highest quality plant producers in Wales selling to Welsh retailers. In 2008, when I decided to change my focus to plant retailers, I wasn't really confident enough to go out to those retailers until we had a product that I felt was as the best product that was available. And so I took a little focus on that um, to make sure that every aspect of that, that product made it stand out on garden centre benches. And that's, that's what we've done. And we've, we've continued to develop that uh, and we've, we've looked at every aspect of, of the product, from the labelling, um, which as much as possible we use bespoke labelling, um, to the compost that we use, to the size of pot and the shape of the pot and the way it looks on the garden centre bench. That's been a very important aspect of the, of the business from, right from, its, from the start in 2008. And I wanted it to be focused on Wales. I felt that we were losing our young plant market to foreign growers who could produce it in much greater quantities and much, much uh, lower prices than we were able to do. So I looked at what was available to retailers um, in this part of Wales. And as I looked around, I could see that a, a great deal of it was imported either from the continent or from uh, English nurseries. And it tended to be either very poor quality or very expensive. Uh, and I felt that we could do something a little old fashioned, but which provided a really high quality Welsh plant. And, and the fact that it was grown more locally and grown without the use of peat or pesticides would be a great selling point for our customers. The, the smaller retailers were uh, selling the exact same product as the, the big DIY sheds and the, and the supermarkets. And I felt that, that was a, a battle that they could never win as a retailer. They needed to differentiate themselves from those large retailers. And I felt that uh, local product that was grown without peat and pesticides would help them do that. And it's something that they could market to their customers. Sometimes the retailers hadn't really cottoned onto that yet, how much of a great marketing tool that was. 
to, to be able to say that it was grown here in Pembrokeshire. Initially, when, when we decided to approach retailers, it was just a case of getting the best product that we could have and knocking on the door, in effect. Initially, we sold via a merchandising system. What this meant was that we took the product to the garden centre and placed them out on the benches for them. And then we'd come back a week later and invoice for the plants that had been sold and then make all the bench look nice for them. The idea of this is to keep the herbs looking fresh and green all the time. They don't have a long shelf life and if you can keep them looking fresh then you increase the sales. It's as simple as that. Uh, herbs are relatively cheap things to produce and that's mainly because they turn over so fast. Every square meter of bench space has a value not just to the retailer but to, to me as a wholesaler. And so we want to maximise the use of that bench by, by making sure that everything on it looked its best and would sell really quickly. And the merchandising system increased sales from people that had never really sold many herbs before. So we don't merchandise the benches anymore and this is basically so that we can fit in more deliveries in a day because uh, at the moment we're having to travel to North Wales twice a week simply because we can't get fit enough on our vehicle. It's very important that uh, when you set out to, to create a horticultural business that you know about your end user, the, the person that's going to take that plant and take it home and put it, put it in their garden and how you reach them. It is that that determines how you present that plant, the whole range, the logistics in moving it around. So if for instance, when I, when I first began to, to grow plants for retail, I could have chosen to sell them via a website or, or on one of the online platforms. And if I'd chosen to do that, the range would have been very different and the eventual product would be very different. Because we choose to sell to garden centres, we need instant impact because the garden centres are very dependent on impulse sales. So that, that plant has to have instant impact on the bench. And so everything is geared to that. We've, we've got a product now which could stand up against any that's produced in the UK. It's always been very important to us for us to explain to the final customer what it is that's different about our plants. And that can be very expensive. And uh, when you're in a market with uh, producers that are much larger and who pay much less for, the, for their materials, it can be quite daunting when, when you go into producing your own bespoke labels and point of sale material and that kind. Uh, it's very important that it's of high quality, but it's vital for us because we are entering a market where there are already people there. So we have to show that, that what we do is different. And so we just have to swallow that cost and try and make it back in other ways. We went to a, an international label company and had these labels designed. And we've been able to put a QR code on there and all the relevant information um, that differentiates us from, our, from the other producers. So we've got, a, we've got the Welsh Dragon on there and we've got the, um, the fact that we don't use peat or, or pesticides and all that's on there as well as all the relevant information about how to grow the plant. So that was really important when we put that on the bench. Anybody that sees that knows immediately that, it, that it's from this nursery because nobody else is, is doing anything comparable to that. I actually prefer potting by hand because you can hear music rather than the noise of the machine working all day. And if there's a little team of us doing this, you can tell when it's going well because of the sound it makes and it sounds a little like a machine. The plugs that we produce are another way that we can distinguish ourselves. Firstly, because buying them in on the small scale that we operate on would be very, very expensive and it wouldn't really be feasible to wholesale them. Um, as I'm really a propagator, it's much better for me to produce our own. And the other advantage from that is that uh, we end up being, having a range that's, that's our range rather than um, a range that's, that's uh, available to any other growers. When you're creating a product that you want for your particular market, it's really, really important to really look at the detail of how that product is going to look. So uh, I wanted a nice, big chunky nine centimeter plant so this is a smaller pot that we grow in but I wanted it to, to be really one of the largest nine centimeters 
because when they say nine centimetres, there's a lot of difference between a small nine centimetre and a large one like this in terms of its capacity. And what it means is that you get a lot more roots in there and so it's likely to establish better when someone plants it in the garden. But in addition to that, it also, the top of the pot, having a large surface area means that when it's in flower, it has a lot more impact than a smaller, smaller pot would do. I wanted to use a square pot because it differentiated us from, from the uh, main producers who were using uh, uh, round pots. So that's the only reason for that. But when we went to the larger nine centimetre, what we found was it didn't look much bigger than, the, than our larger pots. The difference was really quite small. And so we had to then go to a larger, we still call it a litre really, but I tend to call it a super litre because it actually holds 1.4 litres of compost. This is the size that we used to use and which, which our competitors use. And as you can see, the, the actual surface area of the top is much smaller than, than ours. And what that means is that when, when we sell a plant in flower in this pot, it has far more impact. And that's what we need on that garden centre bench because again, it's, it's impulse sales and people put it in the basket and we get a sale. So I've never really had the confidence to go to a retailer with anything that wasn't absolutely outstanding in terms of quality. And it did take a little while to develop that quality um, as the product developed. So th there are certain aspects of that. So for instance, it's very important that, that they're graded properly. So when you put a plant into, the, into a tray and market it in this kind of way, you want them all to be looking at a sim similar size. If we were, for instance, to have one plant in there that was three times as big as all the others, it would make the rest of the tray look really poor. So one of the, one of the things that we concentrate on when, when I'm training anybody to, to prepare the plants for sale is that, that they grade them out so that they all look the same size when, when they go onto the garden centre bench. So, so for instance, they want to be potted so that to, um, to, the, to the top of the pot, we often have to top dress the pot with fresh compost because that makes it look so nice. Um, it has to be well watered and not have any pest and disease and it has to be what we call well furnished so it's, it's going to be large enough with enough leaves on so that you can be confident that when you plant it out in your garden it's going to thrive. Um, also the root should pretty much fill the pot but without having been in there for so long that it struggles to, to grow out of its own root ball. We've tried to be a list producer which means that we, we create a list that, that, uh, that our customers can choose from and it's it's diverse enough to give them colour throughout the important parts of the season. But sometimes what you find is that you, you become particularly good at a particular group of plants. We've really become a specialist in the Sempervivums. So we've, we now have something like 100 varieties on, on the nursery, um, but we also do large quantities. So we produce about 40,000 of these a year and we sell some to other growers and some even um, are picked up by people that then sell them as plugs on eBay. Um, but it was never our intention to become Sempervivum growers. It just became something that we were particularly good at and we were in a position to do it. And as such, we've become one of the few growers in the whole of the UK that can actually produce a broad range in good quantities. And uh, particularly in the summer when there aren't many alpines in flower, these produce a really good impactful colour on, on the garden centre benches particularly when the retailer markets them separately from the other plants and displays them in a particular way. They, and they, by accident, they become exceedingly popular because they behave themselves in the sense that uh, you can go on holiday and leave them and nothing will happen to them. They're very, they're very hardy in the cold, so, so they're an easy plant for people to grow and people love them and are interested in them and, and like to collect them. One of the important aspects about retailing to garden centres is the shortness of the season. Really we have a three month window when, when uh, during our most intensive sales period really between, between about March and the end of May. So it's very important for us to make the most of those few months. And we do that by making sure that we grow varieties and we grow them in a certain way so they look fantastic on the bench at that time. And everything really is geared up to that and it's very important that the logistics on the nursery are as efficient as they can possibly be and also that our deliveries are, are as efficient as we can make them as we deliver plants around, around Wales. When I, when I restarted this business in about 2008, I probably didn't really understand quite how physically demanding the whole thing was going to be. 
Um, it's possible that I wouldn't have started it if I'd known quite how hard it was going to be. We're often led to believe that running a small business is all about um, sort of spreadsheets and, and wearing nice shirts and standing around in an office with lots of office machinery. You often see photographs that look a bit like that. And probably sometimes it is. But sometimes it's not like that. Sometimes it's about being at the end of the month and the money's not there to pay your mortgage or, and you need to cope with those moments. And sometimes it can be about losing all your stock like I did back in about 2010 when we had that cold winter. Um, and there are moments of complete exasperation as well. But also moments of great triumph when you discover that you have a product which people want and you start being recognized for doing that and there's nothing quite like the feeling of being told that your product is doing well in a, in a large-scale retailer especially when you find that sometimes people didn't understand what you were trying to do and that kind of makes it worthwhile and on a day like this when the sun is out and the, and the plants are all growing you can almost hear them growing it's quite a wonderful place to be This is the one thing that I was only ever any good at. I would have probably been the worst plumber in the world. I may have been the worst carpenter. But when it, when it came to plants, I had an affinity with plants. And so I wanted to do it here. And I've had to carve out a, a little market and a, and, a, and a product to fit the market. And, and it's been an exciting ride, but it's not been fun all the time. <laughs> Some people will be familiar with, with how tired and cold and muddy I have to get just to, just to, for instance, construct these polytunnels. Um, and the, the fact that I've had to work out ways of doing them by myself because we couldn't afford to get anyone else to do them. But that's all part of the game. And I think you have to come to appreciate those aspects of it. If you can ap appreciate the problem solving aspect, then you're going to work and you, you'll be very fulfilled. But you, you've got to be ready for the the hard times as well as those moments standing around the, the cooler with a lot of young people that you, that you often see in, in, uh, uh, in business promotional literature and that sort of thing. Because um, it's not really like that for most of the time, especially in an industry like this. It really does come down to, to uh, getting your hands dirty and getting in there and, and doing the work yourself. <laughs>